Hello! In this video, we are going to go through and configure technology objects to go along with the S120 drive that we populated into this project in a prior video. Just to demonstrate what we've got here, in the device view of the control unit, you can see we've got a CU320-2PN, a 16 kilowatt smart line module, one single motor module, a 30 amp unit, and a 3 amp double motor module. All right. So to use the technology objects, we're going to have to do a few things. Let's go through and configure actually the properties of the control unit itself. We can do telegram configuration. We don't need a telegram for the control unit or the in feed in this case, but you can always add them. Let's just go ahead and do that here. Typically I'll use 390 for the control unit. To be honest, I rarely use um, a telegram at all for the in feed module. And you know what? Let's keep that out of the uh, out of the picture today. All right, and for the drive axes, we're going to select Telegram 105 for all of these. That's typically the Telegram that I'll use. However, there are a handful of other Telegrams that are compatible with the um, positioning or synchronous technology objects. I believe it is 3, 5, 103, and 105, although there might be a couple more. All right. So we've got those in there and defined. The other thing we're going to need to do, I usually hop over to our network view. Okay, you can see that I've got a connection between the drive unit and the PLC. However, there is no topology defined. Okay, topology isn't often used, um, but it is for anything that's using what we call isochronous or IRT Profinet. Um, there's only a handful of other things that utilize this, such as uh, some of the features on some of the remote I.O that we have available. But the uh, drives using the technology objects is one of the most common reasons to define topology and utilize IRT. Uh, we'll talk about theory some other day, but basically what I'm going to do is tell it which connection of the PLC is going to which exact connection of the drive. So in this case, I'm going to use P2 of the port uh, of the uh, X1 port on the PLC to P1 on my X150 Profinet port on the drive. Okay. With those done, we're now going to go into the PLC, oh, not program blocks, we're going to say technology objects. Going to add in a new technology object. Motion control. And for all of these, we're just going to do positioning axes. Uh, and run with it. Since this is just a standard 1500 PLC, not the technology version, you'll notice that some of those were grayed out. We'll look at them again when we get back to it. But pretty much the only thing that we absolutely have to define is the hardware interface. So basically, which drive am I talking to and how? So I'm going to select my control unit and then the axis within that. So we'll just do positioning axis 1 to drive axis 1. And now you can see I've got all green check marks. Okay, I'm just going to quickly uh, rinse and repeat here. But notice that the CAM technology object and kinematic technology object 
are not available in the standard 1500. But if you get a 1500T controller, those are you're able to utilize those. Uh, additionally, even in the synchronous uh, technology object, you can insert the technology object, but not all the functions for the synchronous axes are available in the standard 1500. Again, we're just going to use positioning axes. I think that co covers the majority of applications. Going to do the same thing. Drive axis 2. All green check marks. Okay. Now let's utilize. We're going to go with axis two. Axis number one is a induction motor with a high resolution sine, cosine, encoder. Axis number two and three are um, synchronous servo motors using an absolute multi turn encoder. So for a positioning application I, I would say that's probably more common. So we'll go through and walk through some of these. Essentially anything under the hardware interface when you're using uh, Telegram 105 this is pretty much all taken care of. Okay. And you can see these check boxes automatically apply encoder values during configuration, offline, online. Um, essentially, we already are defined what those uh, drives are in the drive click setup. But it would, could go out and uh, find all this info to say, oh, yes, it's a rotary with 512 increments and 496 revolutions, yada, yada. But when we're using a drive click motor, pretty much all of this gets taken care of for us at one point or another. So if you haven't defined uh, the specifics of the drive click, you just told it that you're using a drive click encoder, this stuff will populate later down the road once you connect up. But you can manually enter it if you like as well. Um, leading value settings, uh, to be honest, I don't really mess with this too often. I uh, haven't had a need for it yet. So, Extended parameters. So the mechanics, that's almost always going to get defined. What encoder are we using? Uh, just the one on the back of the motor. However, if you had a encoder mounted directly to the load, you could say on load side and always invert the direction of that if needed. And then this is typically going to be defined a ratio of motor revolutions to load revolutions. So let's say we have a ball screw application. And going into that ball screw, we also have a 3 to 1 gearbox. OK, so that's our um, ratio there. And what is my lead screw pitch? Even if it's not necessarily a lead screw, let's say it's a um, pulley driven belt actuator. Right? I could say, well, my pulley circumference is 150 millimeters, so that means I would travel 150 millimeters per rotation. Right? In this case, 10 millimeter uh, per rotation pitch of a lead screw seems very reasonable. We'll just stick with that. Okay. Dynamic defaults. Keep in mind these are defaults. So if you just um, put in a, a move block in, in your PLC code and leave, I think, negative 1 in the input fields, it's just going to use the defaults. Not super important because the vast majority of the time you're going to tell it exactly what you want it to do. Emergency stop. Um, 
this in part could be defined as your off three stop, but um, depending on what safety functional functionality you're using in the PLC, this may come into play. I don't use it very often in here, but just know that it's there. Position limits. So we could have um, hard limit switches and define what the inputs are for those. We can also have soft limit switches. So if you know um, I'm going to home at zero and I don't want it to go any farther than negative 100 millimeters between and any farther on the other side over 500 millimeters. Right? I'm just going to go back and forth between zero and 400 millimeters all day, every day. Um, so I could also define software limit switches. Dynamic limits. Essentially, what is my maximum velocity in engineering units, millimeters per second? What is my acceleration, again, in millimeters per second? Or I could specify a ramp up, ramp down time. Notice if I change this, it automatically updates the equivalent here. And then if I'm going to use, utilize jerk limitation, aka S-curve or smoothing, that's where I define that. Torque limits. Since we're using Telegram 105, which automatically has a torque um, set point and um, actual torque, then we can utilize this um, for a number of features. Dig into that in a more in-depth technology object video, but again, just know that it's there. And homing to a fixed stop, or even if you have to utilize this within regular operation, there's a fixed stop feature. Homing, since we're using a um, absolute encoder, typically we're just going to home this once and never worry about it again. Um, or we could set up a active or passive homing routine depending on what needs to be done. Typically that's going to be for a standard encoder, not an absolute multi-turn. And then the positioning, um, position monitoring and following error, right? This is basically saying, I want you to be within um, a certain window at a certain time after I get to my endpoint or during my traverse. These are what my allowable following errors are. And here's my uh, what I define as, yep, I am now at standstill. Okay, so within a particular window of time and position. And then here in my control loop is where the position control loop is. Um, this does not have anything to do with the speed control loop, which is controlled completely inside the drive, as well as whether or not I'm going to utilize DSC. Um, with an S120 and a 1500, the answer is always yes, unless you're in a really weird scenario. But and you can see right here that it says telegrams 5, 6, 105, and 106 are compatible with DSC. Okay. And I believe the one button tuning, excuse me, not one button tuning, but the tuning algorithm um, within TIA Portal V16 has. Um, made some slight improvements on helping you choose position control uh, gains a little better than in past versions, however. I haven't used it yet uh, because at the release of V16, we're kind of um, in coronavirus season, so I haven't really had a chance to play around with it with real hardware a whole lot. So here we are. Okay, so I think that's it in terms of setting up a position control technology object. Um, pretty much all the technology objects are going to utilize the same configuration, uh, even if it's speed or um, synchronous axis. It just, you're going to use different um, PLC code blocks to then control them and tell them how to behave.
All right, so we're going to have some more videos along these lines, hopefully some more in-depth ones about what the details and nitty-gritty of all these features are. But just going through and getting it set up, it's essentially adding those position uh, technology objects into your technology object folder here and defining a few things within the configuration.